The player we're going to be looking at today is currently favored to be one of the best players in the world and looking like he's going to be making massive waves in the RLCS scene. Known as one of the most mechanical players on the pitch and feared by the entire EU server, our player only has one flaw. He's banned from RLCS. Meet Zen, the 15 year old French player who's recently been signed to Team Vitality. The man who's been rank one multiple times and has scored some incredible shots on some of the best players in the world. Today, we're going to be breaking down all the little things in his gameplay that you can take on to help you climb the ranks and dominate the pitch, just like Zen. We are going to break down the little bits of Zen's gameplay in three parts. Movement, Game Sense, and Mechanics. Starting firstly with Movement. Now, Zen's movement is the first thing I noticed when watching over a bunch of his replays. Despite him being a controller player, it almost feels like he has keyboard and mouse movement, as all of his turns and cuts are so swift and precise. Now, one of the biggest things to look at as you watch his gameplay is just how often he flips while working his way around the pitch, as it's not as often as you might think. Yes, he is a very fast player and Zen will often flip to gain speed while he's on his way back to defense, but apart from that, he spends the majority of his time on the ground just driving and keeping his wheels on the floor, and there's a very good reason for that. Keeping your wheels to the ground when you are looking to make a play or to challenge the ball allows you to turn and react faster to the play. If a 50-50 happens somewhere on the field and you are mid-flip, you are not going to be able to react to it faster than someone who has their wheels on the ground already, as they can instantly turn to face the ball and start moving towards it. If you are mid-flip, you have to wait for your car to complete the full movement before you have complete control over the car again. Now another thing you will notice, but might find a little bit difficult to add into your own gameplay at first is that there is no wasted movement. He moves around the pitch with reason. He is not pushing up just because he can and he is not constantly going back to get the big boost pads in the corners. He is always trying to position himself according to his teammates and according to his opponents. The way Zen moves around the pitch is heavily focused on maintaining as much boost as he can get from the small pads and making sure that he is setting himself up to be a good teammate. That's not really a straightforward thing to bring into your own gameplay, so to explain that a little bit better, Zen understands that if he keeps himself topped up on boost, he's much more valuable as a teammate. And if he keeps himself topped up on boost and stays composed in his movement and positioning, he makes his teammates life so much easier. Now what you can do to replicate this is, yes, obviously, make sure you are getting boost pads all the time, but also try playing a game where you play really, really passively. Never over rotate and make sure you're always ready to get back and defend if your team needs. And then, straight after that, play another game where you play incredibly aggressively and push for everything. Now, save both those replays and look over them from your point of view and from your teammates. You will notice the flaws and the advantages in both games. From that, try to find a nice middle playstyle combining both of the advantages and eliminating as many of the flaws as you can. Yes, it's a little bit of a task, but it is going to make sure that you're positioning well to both attack and defend at all times. Doing this, maintaining boost, keeping your wheels on the ground during the play, and overall trying to make sure you don't waste time or movement going too far back or too far forward for no reason, and you will be well on your way to being the perfect teammate. Next up is Game Sense. Now game sense is always a little bit tricky to break down because the players we often idolize and take a look at are playing at a much higher level and they have to keep in mind different things. Ultimately, your platinum opponents aren't going to be able to air dribble from their backboard and then carry the ball the entire length of the field, whereas the higher ranks can do that. And so for each rank, you will have to adapt and keep more things in mind. One of the big things to take away from Zen's playstyle when regarding his game sense is that he is a phenomenal passing player. There are many times where he could just take the ball himself and move to make a play, but instead he understands where his teammates are on the field and looks to play the ball into space for them to make a play. He enables his teammates and he puts them in a position to have a better chance of scoring than he would have. So how do you do this? Well, the easiest way is to party up and get into a call or to use the voice chat feature in game to make call outs for your teammates. But obviously I understand that not everyone has people around their rank to play with. And so something else you can do is once you join a game, try to actively keep track of where your teammates are at all times. In a game of threes, you would be surprised that there is more likely than not always someone around that you can pass the ball to if you need to. Keep that in mind and try to use your teammates whenever you can. Yes, you might not be the one who's scoring all the goals and getting all the glory, 
but you are setting your team up for easy shots on net and giving yourself a better chance of winning and then through winning comes a better chance of ranking up. One other thing you can look at when it comes to game sense is all about spatial awareness in regards to your opponent. This one ties into what was being said earlier about how each rank has to look out for different things. Zen knows that at his rank, every single player is capable of full control over the ball. And so he has to be aware of this. This comes in the form of challenging early to not give the opponent time to get control over the ball or pulling back a little bit deeper on defense in case of a full field shot and even sometimes being ready to defend flip resets and double touches. The only problem with trying to implement this into your own games is that each rank below Grand Champ is a little bit all over the place. Some players have really good mech and can shoot from anywhere and some players could be two meters in front of the goal and they would still hit the sidewall. It happens, I know, but a good thing to try when going into your own games is to play a little bit passively. Take the first minute or so to get a feel for how your opponent plays and then adapt their skills and work to try to counter them. Yes, you should be playing your own game and your own style, but keep in mind their capabilities and try to adapt. Last but not least, we have mechanics. Now, Zen is a mechanical god. The amount of times I've seen clips from this dude scoring on some of the best players in the world with some of the wildest shots, it's clear to see that he is unreal when he's in the air. But because of that, unfortunately, this section of the video might not apply to everyone. But one of the things that does apply to everyone is that Zen has both air roll left and right bound. And I have said many times in the past that some of the players with the most mechanical skill in the world are also people who are working with both air roll left and right. Definitely something to try to implement in your gameplay earlier rather than later as I wish I had taken this on a little bit earlier on. Air roll left and right being bound is going to give you so much more control over your car and make it easier for you to make those snappy movements. And if you need another example of a mechanical player that uses both left and right, look at a Vample. He doesn't even have manual air roll bound and I'm sure at this point you all know what he's capable of. That being said, Moving on to something I don't think I've ever said on this channel because I don't really recommend it that often, but when you look at Zen you can see why it works. Every time you have the chance and you have some space in the air, just try to get a flip reset. The flip reset is one of the only things in the game that can be really difficult to predict. With a normal air dribble and double touch attempt, the player shows their plan early on and you can move to defend against it. With flip resets, the earlier you get the reset, the more unpredictable you become. Zen demonstrates it all the time, but just simply having a reset can be the difference between just getting a shot on net and having it saved, or being able to push the ball over two defenders at the last second to set your team up, or just simply scoring the reset yourself. Flip resets would be the number one thing to add to your skill set if you haven't already, and if you can already do them, look to implement them into your gameplay more often, as long as you can reliably make a play with them and you aren't just getting a reset for the sake of getting a reset. The other thing that Zen does that you will need to work on immediately is double taps. Whether this is going to be off the backboard or off the sidewall, learning how to read the ball and the way it bounces at different speeds and at different surfaces is going to make you not only a lot more deadly as an attacker, it's also going to give you the confidence to challenge the ball faster and have a much easier time being first to the ball and catching your opponent off guard. Now, there are hundreds of training packs when it comes to double touches and flip resets, and I will link one of the double touch ones in the description, but just going into free play and working on all of these little mechanical things to step your gameplay up a notch is going to help you out massively when wanting to make the push up the ranks. Instead of doing the whole breakdown of how to do a flip reset and how to double touch right now, if you are looking for tutorials for those two things, the link to them will be on the screen in just a few seconds. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.